Hey guys, I am on Apple's M1 Pro 16 inch MacBook. Um, Apple's 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Um, as if, if you're watching this video, you probably already know yourself how much of a nightmare it is to get hugging face transformers working on the M1 MacBooks, uh, Apple silicon chips. Uh, myself included, like I didn't think it was possible I almost gave up a bunch of times, but I don't know why I kept coming back and seeing articles on how people somehow did it. So I assumed that there must be a way. Um, and I can confirm now in my experience that there is a way. The problem is a lot of those articles I read were not comprehensive. They were talking about p bits and pieces, parts of the process of getting Hugging Face Transformers working such as like, let's install PyTorch and TensorFlow and then just show that Hugging Face was installed. Um, it's a lot more complicated than that. There's a lot of them were saying how getting Hugging Face Transformers installed the easy way, the quick way, the fast way, the, the simple way. It's not easy, quick, fast, or simple. Um, it's, it's quite complicated actually in, in my experience, but I will hopefully alleviate a lot of the complications and my struggle and strain can be the end of yours. So let's just get right into it. Um, I've condensed, oops, sorry, let me just float that. I've condensed a lot of the instructions on how to do this into the blog that you can see down in the link below. And you can actually pull that up and work alongside me um, in getting Hugging Face Transformers working on your M1, M2, whatever MacBook, um, or, or iMac or whatever it is. So check out that blog. Otherwise, for this video, I actually haven't made the blog right now, but I will immediately after this video post it for you guys to see. But right now, all the information I have is pulled up on this Notion. So if you want to follow along in the video, you can just, I guess, see the code here and type it into your terminal. Um, I've, so this is, this is the detailed code. There's two phases, I split it up into two different phases. Um, but I've summarized it here just so I can quickly go through it with you right now. Um, the main steps are, first we need to install Rust in, and you'll see here an Arch i386 terminal. Um, if you don't know what that means, basically when Apple created these silicon MacBooks, because they're, they're not running Intel chips, they need a way to run the Intel binaries, Intel packages, and to do that, they created this thing called Rosetta 2, which is basically an emulator for these MacBooks. Um, and we need to activate or have Rosetta 2 enabled in our terminal so that we can install Rust. Rust is a C compiler that tokenizers right here needs. Um, tokenizers needs the C compiler, Rust. And if we can do that, then transformers will work. Transformers won't, we can install transformers if we don't have tokenizers installed. And we can't install tokenizers if we don't have Rust. So there's a lot of layers to this, which that's why this is not as straightforward as it may seem. Um, but no problem. Before I go into any of that, I just want to show you guys that it's actually working. Um, so I'm going to go to this Hugging Face website. And I plan for us to finish right back where we started was with this web page open. I want you to be able to see that finishing code yourself. So we're gonna run that script, which is Hugging Face's own um, validation script to make sure you have it installed correctly. And sure enough, right here we have um, the same output, similar output as them. Perfect. Now, I'm not just gonna tell you, walk you through the instructions, I'm actually gonna do it myself. I am going to remove my Conda environment. Actually, I should deactivate it first. Conda activate conda env remove ml env. Huh? conda env face conda env remove oh sorry dash dash name ml <sighs> perfect so I'm gonna remove my working conda environment I'm also going to uninstall 
I'm going to install my Rust C compiler so that I am working completely from scratch and just show you guys the exact process from start to finish, how I got it working. Great. We can clear this and start from the beginning. Now, the first instruction was installing Rust in that Arch i3086 I enable terminal. I'm going to come up here for now and just follow the, the more detailed um, uh, steps. Um, so here, say, here we're going to create a virtual environment, kind of create. I'm going to skip this for now and go to number two, which is installing that Rust compiler. We're going to install it from the source. Other instructions will say use brew, brew install Rust. We are not going to do, do that. We are going to install from the source. Um, that alleviates a lot of problems. Um, for me personally, <laughs> I don't know, maybe you'll have luck with installing with brew, but we're going to do it this way. Um, if you're wondering where I got that command from, it is from Rust's own website, um, their installation instructions, which are in fact recommended by them. Um, we'll just go ahead with that. You know, while that's installing, I'll just go through some thoughts that I've had throughout this process. This is a really interesting and difficult process. We'll just, by the way, pause on that thought, proceed with option one, because um, it, it's such a catch-22, because all of these things that say recommended, suggested, I'm very doubtful a lot of the times because they're recommended for Intel or um, AMD, like processor, whatever, but it's, it's so hard to know what's clearly recommended for M1 um, or Apple Silicon chips. And that's what made this process so difficult was I didn't know which instructions to follow. And there's so many instructions. There's so many different ways to get things installed. You have, you can do it in a Conda environment. You can do it in a virtual in, env environment. You can install this version or this version. Um, you can install it using pip. You can install it using Conda. There, there's so many areas of failure. Um, and so that's what made this process so hard for me. Anyways, this is what you want to see right here. Stable x86 64 Apple Darwin installed. This is good because um, you want to be seeing x86-64. If you see here ARM-64, that is a problem. Um, which reminds me, I just skipped a pretty big step. <laughs> um, I specified here, um, install Rust in an Arch i386 terminal. Let me explain what that means. If I type Arch right now, I'll see i386. Perfect. That's what I want to see. But if I go to my standard terminal, you see here there's terminal Rosetta. I'm not going to click that for now. I'll tell you guys what that is in a moment. If I go Arch and I see ARM64, that's a problem. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and install Rust on this and show you what happens. Actually, I don't need to. I can just explain what happens. Rust will install. It will install on a terminal if it's ARM64. Um, but you will not see this you will see instead of x86 and 64, you will see ARM64. You don't want that because it means you're not installing the correct Intel binaries. It's not, it's, it's not, uh, it's not going to act in the way it should to, to compile the C code that tokenizers needs. If you're wondering how to activate Rosetta on your terminal, I will explain that right now. So we'll just pull up my finder. We'll go to applications inside utilities. This is where my terminal is. You see, I have two terminals: terminal and terminal Rosetta. It's a very simple process. You just right-click, get info, and there should be an option to check open using Rosetta that enables Rosetta in your terminal. Um, in my case, it, terminal itself is not enabled, but I just duplicated it. I just did duplicate, created a second terminal, renamed it terminal Rosetta, and in that one, I went to get info and I selected open using Rosetta. And that's how you get um, that Rosetta enabled terminal so that when you hit Arch, you have i386. That's what you want to see. And then inside that terminal, you can install Rust, excuse me, and you will get the correct install of Rust, which is this is what you need for tokenizers to work. So now that we have that working, we can go ahead and create and activate our Conda environment. And you'll see here very specifically with Python version 3.8. Why this version? If we go to Apple's getting started with TensorFlow Metal, TensorFlow Metal meaning it's GPU accelerated metal, it uses the GPU on the M1 chip, um, you will see here in the fine print, which I missed, 
in so many of the countless times that I've tried to install this because I just wasn't paying attention, I tried to make it a simple process, an easy process, a quick process, like all the tutorials said, and I skipped a big thing here. Um, note Python version 3.8 is required for TensorFlow to work correctly. So we are going to go ahead and create our content environment with um, TensorFlow, uh, sorry, with Python version 3.8. I just have the quick code just available here. Save some time. Otherwise, you can type this in yourself. We will proceed with yes. Awesome. That is done. Now, we'll move on to our next step, which is installing TensorFlow. To do that, like I showed you here, there's these Apple instructions. We're getting TensorFlow Metal um, installed. We'll be following these instructions, um, but I've condensed them down once again into the Notion. And the reason why I've done this and why I'm referring to this Notion is similar to all the other articles in the blogs, um, they're all bits and pieces. Like this, this installs TensorFlow correctly, um, but we want to install it in the context of getting Hugging Face Transformers working. So I've kind of ordered the commands in the way that um, we'll get Hugging Face Transformers working, not just getting TensorFlow working. Um, we want more than just TensorFlow. So um, here's our instructions. We've activated, do we have Con Environment activated? Mm -hmm. No, we've created it, but we haven't activated it. Let's, we can just, we can check actually. Conda list, wait, that's not, Conda env list. Yeah, there it is, ML env. We can also actually check our Rust install by typing which Rust C. And you'll see here it is, it is installed. Um, let's go ahead and activate that. ML env. Now let's do conda list. Let's see what we have in here. Um, Python 3.8.13. Perfect. That's what we want. 3.8, version 3.8. Nothing, nothing higher than that for now. If you're installing this sometime in the future, um, maybe go ahead and check the Apple documentation. Maybe they've changed this or something. Um, in our case, we'll stick with 3.8. Now that we've activated our virtual environment, we can go to number four, which is installing TensorFlow. So we'll use the conda command first to install uh, the TensorFlow dependencies. Once again, to just reiterate, I got those commands from here. Um, ARM64 Apple Silicon, we install the dependencies first. We will proceed with yes. Perfect. Now we'll go ahead and install the base TensorFlow for Python. Uh, sorry, for, for Mac, TensorFlow Mac OS. This one takes a little bit, so I'll speed it up if necessary. Awesome. And then finally, we'll install TensorFlow Metal, which has the, the like the shaders, basically that allow um, TensorFlow to leverage the GPU of the M1 chip. Awesome! Now we can install PyTorch. That's a very easy install using this command. Don't have to do multiple things. I got that from a towards data science post uh, blog here. That's where I got the command from. It's uh, install hugging face transformers on Apple M1. This one was the most helpful. So I'll pause there. I'll just proceed with yes. This was the most helpful article by far. So shout out to Jumo Pat Patel. Um, that helped a lot. Didn't get me all the way there though. It got me most of the way, but not all the way. Awesome. We've got PyTorch installed. Now we're going to verify the installs. And I that's that's a really important process. Like I don't... I realized it was really important to test them because sometimes I try to move on to the next step without realizing, oh shoot, they're not installed. And then I'd just be disappointed and sad. So let's test them real quick. We'll start a Python shell. We'll just check that Torch is installed correctly. And these are big imports, so they may take a little bit. And we'll import TensorFlow as TF. TensorFlow particularly is a big one. This one takes, uh, takes a little bit of time. Awesome. Um, now we can 
use these print statements to check whether MPS, which is Mac performance shaders or something like that, are installed. Um, and they should both return true. Um, so there we have that MPS is available and we can see that it is built. Now we will check, so that was checking um, the Torch install, PyTorch. Now we're gonna check the TensorFlow and to make sure that it recognizes the GPU that we are using. Oh, sorry. I've selected one of those um, crocodile, crocodile teeth. Perfect, number of GPUs available, one. That's what we wanna see. Cool, with that set, we can now move on to phase two, which is installing um, hugging faces stuff. Starting with tokenizers and then transformers, then we can test it um, and finish off where we started. So let's install tokenizers. Um, here I have a few instructions, which is installing tokenizers from the source. Um, we're cloning the Hugging Face repository, and then we are building it from the source. I'm actually going to skip that instruction because I had the problem where when I installed from source, I would get version 0 0.13 but this would conflict with the transformers install because I would get an error that says um, I would need less than that. I would need the version 0 0.11.1, um, 0 0.11.1. And I, would, I was able to do that by just doing conda install tokenizers equals 0 0.11.1. This is my first time trying it. I don't know if it'll work. If it doesn't, we'll just install from the source. It would work before when I installed from the source first, then ran that, but let's see if this works because if it does, that would be very simple. Okay, that seemed to work. Um, now let's install the transformers. And I'm actually getting this, this instruction, if you're wondering, um, from, from, from the uh, hugging face transformers install instructions and you'll see it down here. I don't I don't know why they put the conda instructions so far down because I like didn't see it until like my fifth time trying to do it and I was like, oh shoot, there's a conda instruction. So yeah, that's where I got that from. Awesome, so now we have transformers installed. Let me just double check, awesome. Let us verify now that it's all working. Um, if it is, I'll need to change those instructions. So we'll just get the verification script that we ran in the beginning of the video. Oh shoot, sorry, I don't know why I hit enter twice. Perfect, label, positive score, yeah. So that's, that's what we wanna see. Um, so apparently I can change these instructions um, for installing tokenizers and make it way simpler. Um, we can just do conda install tokenizers equals 0 0.1.1. Perfect. Um, but yeah. That is how to get um, Hugging Face Transformers working on the M1 Max. I really hope that that was helpful to you. If you have any problems, let me know in the comments. Hopefully we can figure out together. Um, if you wanna refer back to other instructions, check out the blog. Um, all, all of the things that I did in this video, all the commands I ran um, will be there on the blog. Um, if you're having problems, again, put comment in the blog as well. Um, and hopefully we can figure out your problems together. Uh, this is a, it's a tough, it's a, it's a really tough thing. Um, so yeah, we, we uh, Apple Silicon users really got a band together on this one. <laughs> Good luck using uh, Hugging Face Transformers.